look, you look at her, she has a story. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so let's, let's, uh, why don't we just down the line and introduce ourselves, and then we will open the, uh, the panel up to, uh, the Q&A, uh, which is, if you don't know what that means, ask the person next to you. Uh, oh, let's start anti-clockwise, shall we? Anti-clockwise? Down there. When it's a straight line, it's clockwise even count anymore, right? Hi, I'm Michelle Nott. Yeah. Um, I've been doing voice acting for about 10 years now. I'm Jesse Pokemon and Elisa Boscovich in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And coming up November 5th, I'm Lilia Sotobi in The Guided Fate Paradox by Advanced America. If anybody knows it, I guess nobody knows that game. Okay, never mind. Shame on you. I pre ordered it. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Brigham Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pituitary disorder. Uh, no, I, I'm Jay Michael Tatum, and I have been in tons of stuff. Yeah, everyone's like, hey! <laughs> There's always one person that like, can't contain their joy at the sound. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's just a word. It's not even that impressive. The J stands for John. It's not juicy. I don't care what Chris that is. <laughs> John I love the shows, but most notably, probably, oh my god, everyone on the panel, cover your ears. Black Butler. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, tons, tons and tons and tons of things. Zoran, I've been uh, in, in Full Metal Alchemist. Brotherhood is Scar. I also do a lot of adaptive writing uh, as well, so I get to do things on either side of the mic, and it is fun. And the lovely lady to my left. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Troy Baker, and I just pooped myself. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Stephanie Young, and then for um, Robin in One Piece, Olivier and Full Metal Alchemist, uh, Rack and Soul Leader, and Claire Claymore, among others. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Robert Axel, I write the voiceovers. The last job I did was with the, the Grand Master, uh, a kung fu movie that is out in the theaters right now. Uh, <laughs> in the original Japanese, I might add. Now, our dub version is not yet, so uh, I, I'm feeling that's just going to the video, but uh, uh, I'm very proud of it. It's a, it's a good movie. I saw it, uh, saw it uh, last week, two weeks ago, something like that. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Chris Casey. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> and I had a drinking problem. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, are you laughing at my... are expensive. Well, right, so I've done, uh, let's see, I've directed anime for eight years, and I've uh, written stuff, and I've voiced stuff like uh, uh, Mr. Popo and Chin Shin on Dragon Ball Z, and uh, let's see, Gluttony and Full Metal Alchemist, and uh, Holy Roman Empire in Italia. And I have a drinking problem. Welcome. And, and, uh, <laughs> It'll be a long hour, guys. <laughs> I also... Say it. Say it. Poop myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got my own mic. I don't need that. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Christopher Smith, and I don't have a cheat sheet in front of me, and I'm terrible remembering things that I've done. Um, so I don't need things and stuff. Um, we'll have Full Metal One Piece. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Skyrim, uh, yeah. Show Monsuno, uh, shows on the air right now are Monsuno, Digimon, um, and other stuff. <laughs> and now you. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, come on. I can't remember. <laughs> it will be a long hour. Guy, <laughs> man, just send him on. Send their questions in. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. 
So, uh, I ask questions so we get to be able to hear them. Right? Oh yes. <laughs> what? So Tim, you're you're now Montel Williams. I own it. Okay. You brought the you brought the portable paternity tests. Talking to me. We'll have to take. Yeah. You are not the man. Oh. But but. All right. So we all have questions that you want to ask. And, uh, all at the same time, let's just get these knocked out. Start us out with Um yes, um Rachel here. said you each do um Wally Seven. Do you like feel like you're that kind of character that you play in real life, but your personality? What? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Yes. <laughs> Something about our personality. Character you're most alive. Character you're most alive, or do you feel like any character you play? Kind of like that, yes. <laughs> I would say definitely, definitely. I woke up in the morning and I felt like I was Lord Zen. <laughs> I, even, I even slept with a spear in my uh, <laughs> a hockey mask. All right, who's next? Scalper tell us a story. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like to hear my tale? Just project. Yes. Yeah. Fool! <laughs> really? One person left. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what was the one where 
you had most fun with? Uh, I would say uh, Elmer in uh, Hello Spencer. This is a show you might have never heard of. <laughs> Fun? Character you've had most fun voicing. Okay. For those of you that know Desert Punk, Jumbo. Yeah, they have lots of crazy fun. Thirteen-year-old boy humor throughout the entire show. It's kind of scary in the beginning, but if there was one, yeah, that's good. That's good. I would do yes. that. Friends from the top. <laughs> She was of a, no, 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 more like droop. 
So of course it wasn't doing anything, but just kind of making nature go, see, I told you. And, and she was a bit advanced in years, so having her in a corset was I'm like, Grandma, what? That's weird. Why are you wearing a corset? And to top it all off, true story, while I was signing her corset, she farted. <laughs> and did not own it at all. Just and just kept on like, I'm like, I'm not even sure she knows she just did that. I'm gonna sign this and get the hell out of here before whatever this smells like starts, you know, manifesting. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for watching. There I went. So, yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. I'm not gonna hold this tape. I... Do you know what time it is? Having, uh, having this really, really uh, hot chick come up in, in this amazing outfit, like it was like she was decked, ba -ba 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 -ba. and I'm like, oh, really, really, several. She's a very attractive woman coming up, and they came over like, I loved your intrinsic. <laughs> I always feel awkward the signing of the, the abs and the back. You know, it's fine, and it's not like feet. Boy, that, that's pretty crazy. But there's been plenty of abs, and, and one young man had really ripped particular abs. It just, it just it felt a little strange, but I went ahead and signed on that. You know, it was fine. And then one person said to me that was strange, he said, wow, you're really bubbly and nice. None of your characters are like that. Oh, oh, Which is really kind of true. They're, up, they're strong, Troy. They're just assertive. They know what they want. Strong. My turn? All right. Well, I was at a party when I was about 19. And uh, we were lying down in my friend's basement. Uh, pretty stunning. <laughs> this guy came down. Uh, and he sat on the bed. We were both sitting on the bed, lying on the bed, or whacked out. And uh, he started petting my head. <laughs> this guy. And I waited for the album to get over, and I got the fuck out of it. <laughs> so that's a real thing that happened to me. You guys 18 yet? Foreheads, which is weird, and I said, just don't turn them into tattoos. I can't live with myself, but that's on your face the rest of my life or your life. Uh, so signing foreheads is weird, of course. Uh, the worst thing that ever happened to me, as far as a con, was uh, the Hello Kitty thing that you made. No, no one knows. Tell the best. Tell the best. So I'm at a con, and it was over my birthday weekend, and it's a Friday night. And I'm walking to the hall with my birthday cake, half of which, and all I wanted to do was walk into my hotel room, open the cake, and face plant, and eat and cry as usual. But this night, walking forward, a girl pops in front of me as if in a dream, although not, more like a nightmare, and she says, hi, I said hi. She said, yeah, I have a favorite anime character. I said, yeah, you're right, but it's come. And she said, yeah, well, I like to wear my favorite anime character really close to my body. Uh oh <laughs> The cake's getting heavy. And then I said, okay, cool, that's a wonderful choice to do in your life. And then she says, do you want to see what I mean? And I said, actually, I know. And then like, the major, no. And then she turns around. She drops her pants. It's a Friday night hallway. It's a hallway. She drops her pants. And I'm staring at uh, yellow Hello Kitty underwear. And, uh, no. and so now she pulls the pants back up. She turns looking and goes, <coughs> you know, sweat, red face. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> And that was Friday, now cut to Sunday. Sunday, closing ceremony. Yay, we had a great time. And it's a bigger bumper than this, it's crowded. And I have my luggage, the car's ready to take me to the airport. And I'm walking by, walking, 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 and brrrr. Remember me? I think I do. And she's like, yes, I'm And I'm like, could it be that you're, oh, it's 
turned around with more confidence than the last time, pants down, lower to the ankles, and everybody's walking past, and she got purple Hello Kitty underwear. Now, uh, I'm glad they weren't the same yellow ones. I guess she brought the Hello Kitty fun pack. And I've heard about my business to judge, and she turns around, what did you think about this time? <laughs> Gotta go! And I got that car, got me out of there. And to this day, I hate Hello Kitty. Thank you. <laughs> Reactions. 
20 minutes, 20 minutes of that doing a Kung Fu movie. <laughs> Is that what they call it nowadays? I can't think of the strangest thing. I can think of one of the most uncomfortable things that I, that I had to do, and that was when I was uh, voicing Sponda in One Piece. And, and just abusing the crap out of, out of Stephanie, Nico Robin, um, because the character is such an asshole. You really were. Oh, man. Um, he'll, he's, got, he's got, you know, Nico Robin on the ground with his poop on her head, and he's teasing her. He's like, oh, what's the matter? You're, are you crying because I have my poop digging into your face? Or is it because you're an orphan? <laughs> right? Yeah. Or because you're trying to blow up the world on top of beating me senseless? That too! <laughs> he was no, so good at that. Very uncomfortable, very, so very sadistic, and I felt so bad. You should. <laughs> oh, I hated you. Hateable. You were really good at it. Hateable. Yeah, but you forgive me. Yeah. Someone from this side will be. Another question. Oh, yes. Yeah. Friends of the question. How about you? Question. Yeah. Uh, what was the one thing or the things that um, inspired you to become a actor? Okay, never mind. My question was asked. Oh, you know, I. Yeah. What's up, I, I would have to say, about, uh, there's many factors that go into it. Um, no, come on, let's be serious. Uh, it's the money. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted a lot of it, you know, and, um, you know, you spend time in prison, and you come out on the other side, and you say, what's missing in my life? And it, it's money. I would, uh, I would say pursue that. Really, really, really find out how much money you want. <laughs> and just uh, don't let anybody, don't let anybody say no, like law enforcement, don't let them, don't let them. <laughs> just, just go after the money. Yeah, be fulfilled by the things that you buy. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, volunteer. <laughs> to get money. <laughs> Please, please. Unless it's for life. Like a pharaoh. <laughs> Die like a pharaoh. Do you have... Um, Carol Burnett and Robin Williams. Uh, and that's my inspiration. I love that song. They made a lot of money. No, that's awesome. That's all they did. They, only, they did. They made a lot of money. Um, Oh, now I'm gonna get kind of serious for a second, so shut up. Um, I, I know, right? Everyone, that's the world's smallest violin playing just for me. I, uh, the reason I got into acting, when I was very, very little, um, I couldn't speak. I had a really, really, really bad speech impediment, a stutter. Like, I, I honestly couldn't speak at all. Uh, and I used to walk around with a little notebook that I wrote in to speak. Uh, that's how I communicated, because it was too painful to try to talk to people. It was really, you know, debilitating. I know, I've been making up for lost time ever since. Um, but the fact is, you know, I, I uh, took speech therapy. And the woman I took speech therapy with, who was phenomenal, uh, was a little ancient British woman. That's why I have no Texas accent, even though I was born and raised in Texas. Um, I, got, I, got, I got learned by Brit. Um, <laughs> And uh, she, she, had, she was in the theater, she was involved in, in music and theater and all that, which is uh, you know, fairly common from what I understand. And uh, we found that uh, if I was given something to read or recite or poetry or whatever, the stutter disappeared if I had a script. And so I literally fell in love with the idea of being on stage and reading and, and being an actor because that's how I found my voice at all. Uh, not, not anymore. It's been a while since the stutter has, you know, emerged. But every now and again, I suppose. But not nothing like those days. No, I think I've, I'm so used to acting that I'm kind of always playing a role and I'm always going off of some script, uh, whether I'm conscious of it or not. And so, yeah. But because of that, theater was my therapy, basically. Jill Jones, same thing. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Horrible stutter. So yeah, that's why. That's why I found. I literally found my voice through through acting. So. Aww. And now they can't shut me up. Oh no, I've said enough. I think so, please. We'll know more about prison. Um, 
I know for me, I, I, theater was my home, but I didn't discover that until I was in college. And I started out college as a political science major because I was bound for law school. And to me, it seemed like a very good, sensible, great career to be involved in. Back to the money thing. I got a good question. And then I took, next. I'd done a little bit of theater in I high got a really school, good question which I highly recommend. Like but um, I took a non-majors so acting yeah, yeah, course yeah, yeah. Yeah. at yeah. university, yeah. Yeah. and that was sort of like dipping my toe in, and I was so happy there, and I felt like I was with my people. And then eventually became a double major, and then eventually kicked the political science and just went full force into theater. But for me, it was it was a hard decision to make. I knew that that's where I was happy, but it just seemed crazy. They I, you know, I came from a family that, that who does that? You know, oh, that's great, but who does that? And um, I encourage you that if that's something you really want to do, don't be afraid to jump in. It may be kind of crazy at times, but it's worth the ride if it's what makes you happy. So, yeah, theater. My people, my creative people. When I was five uh, in kindergarten, the kindergarten teacher brought in this hollowed out television set with all the stuff taken out. And she put each one of us in the TV set and said, entertain the class. So when it came to my turn, I just imitated what I saw on television, which was uh, Senor Wences on the Ed Sullivan Show. Senor Wences was a, uh, a comedian who would do, do hand puppets with his hand. He'd go, <laughs> And so I did that, and I cracked the kids up. So uh, I was hooked. Sure. Man, I did a hand puppet. I loved that. Oh, oh, it worked. So I just, you know, and I've been stealing material from people ever since. <laughs> I like the idea that you can, even as a little kid, I remember going to the movies and or watching TV and being transported and forgetting about anything else that was, of course at that time there weren't too many troubles, but I just love the idea that it is, it's sort of cathartic and you can forget any problems during that time. And I love the idea that now, um, by performing, you can also take people away somewhere else uh, and maybe make them forget about their troubles for a short amount of time. I love that aspect of, of entertainment. I know at Funimation there was a... There was a girl who came in who, she was in a wheelchair, and she said, um, she was talking to all of us, and she said, uh, for the time that I'm watching, I forgot the show specifically, I, I don't remember that I'm in the chair anymore. And I was so moved by that, and I thought, wow, if, if that's anything that we can do at all, you know, uh, we're gonna be dead uh, someday, but... but Not me! <laughs> Robert will be dead, and, but these shows will will live on, you know, way past us. And I really like the idea that they will maybe make people happy way into the future one day. So I, I love that part of it. So I think it's kind of a magical thing, really, and that's what I love about it. First of all, damn you, Casey! I don't want to sit next to you anymore. First, it's your Hello Kitty story. I gotta go after that. Now it's your heartfelt sincerity. <laughs> He's oh, got it all. Screw this. Uh, fine. All right. Let's say something. Um, uh, I have a I have a, a sister who is ten years older than I am, and so I grew up watching her uh, in productions. Yes, oh. she is eighty-two actually. But she doesn't look it. Um, and so I grew up watching her on, on stage, uh, doing musicals and Shakespeare, and she's a brilliant actress, and I, I would love to be half as good as she is. Um, but that was, that was my inspiration, was growing up watching my sister and just admiring how, how amazing she is. Hi guys, how you doing? Sharp dresser. Thank you, thank you. All right, I have this one question here for you. Yeah, absolutely. I try. 
Who are you? Are you in the media? No, 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 no. I was actually earlier. I was doing the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show okay. over here. So making more um, sense. Yeah. Is, is that your final answer? Okay. Um, actually, I do have I do have a question here for you. Um, if you did not go into a career in voice acting, what career would you go into? Oh. Everything about that question was so professional. Like the pause, everything. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to blow a friend? It's on the edge of my seat. It's fantastic. Thank you. 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ask a deep question like that. I, just, I was just one. No, so oh, it. we think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Guilty as charged. Um, I would have gone into the diplomatic corps. Yeah. My, dad was, uh, my dad was in military intelligence, and uh, so I would have done something with the State Department. Okay. Psychiatry. There is, well, that was weird. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, in acting, you know, actors are typically fascinated by literature and uh, psychology to a degree that's a part of acting anyway. And I'm fascinated by psychology, psychiatry, and I, I, love, uh, I love finding out what makes people tick, and I like finding out about people and their stories, so, so that. Very astute. A professional hockey player. <laughs> Wow. I was a little bigger than I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> Medium. <laughs> you know, I probably would have gone ahead and gone to law school. I, that was something I was very passionate about. Right. Maybe gone into, you know, I know politics is crazy. At least we're back in business now. But um, that's, yeah, yay. But that, that may have been an arena that I would have loved to have gone in, at, you know, post-law school. So now, maybe I'll get to play one on TV. But, yay. But that's something that actors, you know, we, we do like to get involved because playing these characters, it's, it's incredible and it's exciting. And the fact that you guys respond the way you do and leaving a legacy creatively is, I think, something very special about this. But then sometimes, you know, you like to step away from it and, and do maybe be more, how do I say this? I don't know. Actually, what? Pro, yeah, proactive, but actually doing some of the things that these characters do in real life. <laughs> You know, not just from a script or in a booth, you know, you've got to get out there. So, um, I don't know, I'd like to think maybe that would have happened, and it still could. Yeah. Still could. Yeah. We're not dead yet, guys. That's right, now. Absolutely. I would say meth dealer. <laughs> and he leaves it at that, I love this. I love this. You should just try. And like Thor afterwards, none of us can pick it up. Like, son of a... Um, I would have and very nearly was uh, a classical pianist. Uh, that's what I actually went to school for uh, before. I know I dropped out. Everyone's like, hey, what's that? <laughs> it's like a keyboard, only it has a much larger body and play music that no one listens to anymore. Um, yeah, I actually went to conservatory uh, for, uh, I've played classically since I was six years old, and I had this whole idea of everyone's like, wow, it's not that hard. If you've been doing it, Chris, if you've been doing it from six years old, it's not that hard. It's like typewriting, except there's noises. Um, Ever. It wasn't like Juilliard. It was in Oklahoma. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. But I did. I would have been. I would have been. Um, I would have been. Milk cow or play the piano. <laughs> Those were my choices. So I. Uh, but no, I, I actually studied, and I. I <laughs> Childhood all over again. I said I'm also stuttering. Um, I know. Well, you're multitasking. That's why they write like pieces for just right hand only. So God, I love it took pictures of that because that's going to come back to haunt me. Just to turn it off. Well, everyone. Well, we've got nowhere to go but up now. Uh, what about you? <laughs> Now I hate going last. 
Um, I did I did track and field in school, and I also played the piano too. Um, so my parents actually thought that I, you know, would try out for the Olympics and stuff. I was doing really well in track and field and high jump and shot put and stuff like that. But, you know, I never did. It got to the point where, yeah, I was starting doing theater in high school, and I had to choose between, like, theater and track and field, and I went into theater instead. I think my parents were just a little disappointed, but I don't know, because they were really happy about that. But I, me, for me personally, I wish I would have stuck with the piano and played me. I really like playing piano, so. I just still can't. No, not really. A little off and on, but not really. So I wish I would have went professional with it. So, but my parents kind of wish I went professional with track and field. But so. you're doing pretty darn well with that. I know. <laughs> 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 you're going track and field. You have to retire by it. Yeah, that's true. You can only be. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Okay, we've got enough time for one more question. We'll get it from this side of the room. Let's see here. Who's got a really good question? Well, I'd love to see someone go. Oh, my God. How about you with that? Right. Do you feel, as a voice actor, it is more difficult to convey emotion in the shows as compared to a film actor, where it's easier because the animators have already done the body language for you? I'm going to answer one seriously. I'm going to answer one seriously. <laughs> Meth dealer. Uh, <laughs> I think that it takes, and I think we've all seen this, um, it's a very specific skill set that, that is required um, to, to walk in and do, whether it be anime, which is a completely its own beast. Um, or even original animation, or in video games. And I've personally seen legit, holy crap, I can't believe blank is in the room, someone who's known on TV or film, come into, um, like, uh, we're on the Avengers together, whatever, or, or one of those shows, like an original animation, and literally it's, you know, there's 12 people around the room, and we're just doing mic checks. Okay, so it's like, ah, oh, Troy, give me a little bit of level. I'm like, oh, fart so <laughs> whatever, you know. And you, you do a little bit of your character, and you see these pros that have been doing this for a long time do their mic check, and then you get to X celebrity, and you just see them go white and sweat. It's like, ugh. <laughs> uh, and then they'll do, deliver their line, and they're like, Many eyes, all the eyes, and they're like, "Oh, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not really coming through." We just take it. It's like, "What? Well, you see the eyes?" Give like, yeah. me the eyes, and you see them not be able to translate what they're so good at doing. When you see this, and they can't replicate that with just this, um, so I definitely think that it's much harder because you also have to surrender your performance to that animator. Uh, and that takes a lot of trust, and it takes a lot of, oh, I hope you, because in your mind you've got this movie that's playing, and you want it to look exactly like this, and you have to let go of that. And, and you really trust the team to go, I'm going to give you everything that i got, give me everything you got, and hopefully it's something, you know, you create something together that, that will resonate with people. that it's, it's easier when you can be real physical. So when you're on camera, you have that physicality to help get you out of your head and get you where you need to be. And usually if you have the privilege of reacting off of another person, also gets you out of your head and you do your acting thing, it's so much easier. But when it's all just concentrated here, you know, it is, it's a different skill set and it's, it's more of a challenge sometimes. You know, yes, sometimes we get to get a little physical and I know I've hit my share of pop screens, ew. But um, definitely on camera, I think, is sometimes easier. Right. All right, so that was a tough question. I don't think there's any black and white answer for me. It depends on the material. 
depends what the, the tone level is, the emotional tone level is of the material. Uh, it certainly is easier when you have the animation of the, uh, the Kung Fu guy going, ha, 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 to go, ha, ha, ha. You start hacking away, and, uh, but uh, it, gets, it gets sometimes tough to, to dub live action because sometimes the actors are so low key and the director wants something emotional and you look at the actor's face and he's really low key and you say to the director, wait a minute, it's just not there on his face. You gotta give it to give it anyway. Uh, that's difficult. That's the best I can do. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! <laughs> How many of you are going to be here tomorrow? Woo! All right, that's a good amount. Good amount. Good amount. Uh, we actually have a lot of good uh, work to do on Sunday. Um, we're going to be also having more autographs. I know there were a couple people who missed autographs during today's session. Um, hopefully, you can get the autographs of people that you are interested in seeing. Um, I'm extremely glad that we have all these great attendees here today, and can't wait for everyone to. Uh, to enjoy the phone again, you know? Hopefully we see you back next year. Alright? So no.